Welcome to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB and uh, till now we have discussed uh, basic matrix operations in using MATLAB and uh, we have discussed the data types. Now we will discuss another important factor that is useful for uh, simulating communication systems and uh, the ideas. So, these are complex numbers. So, we have classically or we have all done complex numbers in our high school and the basic complex number which is the square root of minus 1 is given by iota or j in our high school mathematics. So, in MATLAB we represent a complex number. So, we will follow th there are other ways of representing this as well, but we will in general follow z equals x plus 1i times y. So, x, y are real numbers or double precision by a real number precision floating point numbers and uh, so in general you could write z as x plus y i as well, but uh, this notation at times leads to confusion. So, 1 i times y we will represent this. So, let us first start off by looking at the square root of minus 1. So, we can simply say square root of minus 1 and MATLAB will give me the answer is 0 plus 1 i and uh, say I want the square root of minus 2, it will give me 1.141 uh, 0.1412 i. So, this is the standard Cartesian representation of a complex number. So, this and z equals plus y i you can write it like this. So, this is slightly different from the standard written notation. X plus I, iota y or x plus j y, but so, the next thing that we will do is we will look at the different properties of complex numbers. So, when we talk about a complex number z or z, we say that so real part of z equals imaginary part of z equals y. There is an alternative representation since uh, a complex number is represented as a point in the two dimensional argon plane, we can alternatively represent it instead of its x and y coordinates, we can also represent it using its magnitude and phase which is equals magnitude of z equals y square and angle of z equals tan inverse y upon x or arc tan. Obviously, you could so x y or so this is the equivalent the polar representation of z. Then there is also the notion of z conjugate that equals so j theta or r iota theta and there is also the notion of z conjugate which equals x minus j y or r minus iota theta fine. So, it is known that into z conjugate that uh, the mod square of z is z z conjugate equals z or mod of z equals square root of z z conjugate or angle of z equals half log to the base e 
this fine. So, this is uh, how you define everything in terms of uh, also real part of z equals z conjugate divided by 2 imaginary part of z equals z minus z conjugate divided by 2. So, these are the ways in which you can represent a complex number. So, let us do all of this. So, z conjugate is represented by MATLAB. So, let us look at all of this. So, let me define a complex number say equals So, z is 3 plus 4 i standard number. So, I want to extract its real part to extract its imaginary part 4, I want to take its absolute value 5, 3 square plus 4 square 5, I want the angle this, this is in radians naturally. So, you want the conjugate of z this you want the absolute value of conjugate of z it will be the same you want the angle of conjugate of z which will be same. So, say w equals conjugate of z. So, w times z equals 25 which is uh, mod square and uh, z divided by w log point nine two seven three. So, or rather I should correct it here that this is the imaginary part of this fine. So, these are the basic operations on complex numbers that uh, can be accomplished using MATLAB and uh, this is how MATLAB uses the complex class. So, the next thing we want to do or we want to discuss after complex numbers are, so once we are done with complex numbers the next thing we want to discuss are complex matrices. So, or we first discuss complex vectors and then we discuss complex matrices. So, obviously like we define vectors x and y in R n, we can find them in C n that is or we have used capital N. complex space. So, a vector x is said to be in C n if x 1 x n such that x i is a complex number. So, the only thing here is that uh, or uh, the tricky part about uh, complex numbers is the idea of the inner product. So, we have defined the inner product and the outer product for a vector. So, let us see how does that change in case of a complex vector. So, consider a vector or two vectors x and y, the two vectors x and y in the n dimensional complex space. Then if we go by the tra traditional definition of the inner product then x transpose y is the 
inner product. But this definition will be problematic in case of complex vectors. Why? Let us uh, come to the answer. So, the length of a vector or its norm is defined as the square root of the inner product that is defined as the square root of uh, the inner product of that vector with itself. Fine. So, this is defined as uh, the square root of the inner product of that vector with itself. So, now if I take x transpose x, this equals summation x i square i goes from 1 to n, sorry not this x i square. Now, for arbitrary complex x i, x i square need not be a positive real number, L let alone it be a positive number. For example, consider example equals iota or j whatever you want iota so, x is a vector containing i's, all iotas. So, the problem is that when I take x transpose x, I get summation i goes from 1 to n iota square or i square, which becomes summation i goes from 1 to n minus 1 equals minus n. So, x transpose x in this case negative or suppose x equals uh, j this this can also be there and then So, this is an imaginary number. So, obviously, the square root of this will also be square root will be a complex number. So, we always think of the length of a quantity or the length of a vector as a positive real number. So, the point is that uh, we always think the of the length about the length of a vector as a positive real number. So, because of that this notion of inner product does not fit into the length always being uh, a positive real number. So, what do we do? So, for complex numbers, we actually redefine the inner product. So, for complex numbers, we redefine the idea of inner product such that for vectors x and y the duct the inner product 
is as x complex conjugate transpose y that is summation k goes from 1 to n x k complex conjugate y k. So, this is how you define the inner product and uh, this operation of complex conjugation and transpose. So, equivalent to of complex conjugation and transpose is known as the Hermitian operator. This uh, combined conjugation and transpose is known as the Hermitian operator. So, this is represented by this and the inner product is represented by x Hermitian x or x Hermitian y. So, the inner product is represented as x Hermitian y. So, this case of vectors the norm is given by square root of x Hermitian x this equals square root of summation of k goes from 1 to n mod square of x k this fine. So, this is how you define complex numbers and complex vectors. So, let us look at an example here. So, let us look at an example. So, x equals 1, 2, 4, 5 plus 1, 4, 3, 7 times. So, this oh sorry this created something else we do not want that right now we will discuss this later this. So, this gives us a complex vector that looks like this. So, now MATLAB by default. So, this is worth mentioning that uh, this is worth mentioning here. So, I will write it down here. by default the operation in MATLAB is equivalent to the Hermitian operator or the conjugate transpose. So, by default this operator in MATLAB is equivalent to Hermitian. So, let us look at this. So, this and I will just print this. So, this gives us the conjugate transpose of x which is given like this. So, now let us try to find the inner product by the conventional way x times x this gives me. So, this gives me a complex number whereas, this gives me a real number which equals the mod square of uh, all the elements of x. So, this is uh, how the Hermitian operation works. Obviously, this is true for other complex numbers and complex matrices as well. So, we can uh, try out. So, the Hermitian operator in general, so I should write it here. Operator in general is the conjugate transpose of a matrix. The Hermitian operator is the conjugate transpose of a matrix. So that said, 
uh, we end this lecture over here with uh, these details on complex numbers and complex vectors in MATLAB. We will continue the next time and look at some results in linear algebra for complex numbers and complex vectors. Thank you. Mm -hmm.